Hello everyone, my name is Fran. I have been struggling with mental health issues ever since I was a teenager and I've been working through those issues with a psychotherapist for about four years now. In this channel, I share my personal experience and skills I learned along the way to help you tackle issues like fear of abandonment, social anxiety, people pleasing, so that you could create and enjoy healthy relationships. If that is something that you're interested in, please subscribe so that you don't miss any updates. Today I want to talk about the common patterns and behaviors that the anxiously attached or can call it anxious preoccupied people display in love. Every relationship later on in life models the original ones we have with our caregivers, with our parents. I found this incredibly important during my own healing journey that it's very important you know why you behave this way. Once you understand that you have the choice to unstuck you have the power to make changes happen and create meaningful relationships no matter how much of a rocky start you think you got. The first and biggest pattern is that you have this strong fear of abandonment and that is what I devote a lot of energy in this channel to talk about. People who are insecurely attached, we often have this irrational like next level fear that someone's gonna abandon us. It doesn't matter if you just meet this person. Once we get attached, it's just uncontrollable. And driven by the strong abandonment anxiety, you would display two big behaviors. The first behavior is that you're gonna be hyper vigilant about distance. Like you constantly monitor the frequency, the duration, the intimacy level of the connection that you got. For example, you remember the exact detail of the time that you talked last week. You remember the gap that you haven't been talking and you're counting like, oh, this is one week and this is two weeks and three weeks. He hasn't reached back to me, he hasn't talked to me. And you start to panic with the passing of time. One thing I often do is that I would closely monitor the tone of the texting words he's using. For example, last time he texted me like two words, but this time only one word. Or this time it's only an emoji because the changes mean uncertainty. I'm not sure. Well, right now you're here, but next moment I'm not sure where I'm gonna be. I'm not sure if you're gonna leave me without notice. I'm not sure that if you're ever gonna come back. Which models the exact behavior that we display as the anxious preoccupied type when we're children. And the second big behavior is that we would have this uncontrollable yearning and urgency to be close to that person. I think this is something that we all get it. We're gonna stalk the social media of that person. We're gonna constantly call, we're gonna constantly text, we're gonna constantly check in. Well, to see if they're there and if they're still attracted to us, if they're still gonna be there for us in order to get a reassurance about the distance and the level of connection that we got. And even if some people are too proud to do that, like I was, I wouldn't call and we wouldn't test, but secretly I would be obsessing in a mind level about this person, like what they're doing, just uncontrollable. It's kind of compulsive. The second pattern is love addiction, or you can call it limerence. That just generally means the infatuation that you have with another partner. And the two biggest behavior attached to this pattern is that you constantly fantasize about unconditional love, attention, and care from this person. This is a really big one I have talked about constantly in my channel because people who, are, who have this core wound, we never got our needs met when we were children. So, in order to survive, we found a way that is about mind obsessing. Like we couldn't actually get it, but to survive, to keep us alive, we fantasize about it so that we could get the pleasure, get the euphoria feeling from getting our needs met. I just have so much to say on this topic. I have made a couple of videos on fantasizing too much. I'm gonna put it up here and you can check it out later. But in brief, you fantasize about this person like 24 seven, unstoppably on your mind to a level that you just completely forget about the world because all you can think about is to stay in connection on your mind level with this person. This could be like you fantasize about those random encounters in the supermarket on the street. You fantasize about getting introduced by them to their parents and friends. You fantasize about them, you know, telling you and looking you in the eye that you're the love of their life. It's just so happy to a level that you might go hyper excited every day just because of these fantasies. And I do that for many years in every relationship 
till to the point that I found that quite disturbing because I find out that normally the, the security tech people don't do that. It's not a common thing. Then not everybody's like me. And it just makes me feel isolated and ashamed because I seem to be all over the place just about this one person. And second behavior is that because of this fantasizing thing, your focus of your life just completely shifts. Your work is not that important anymore. Your parents, friends, like you can cancel them all you want just because of this one person, this girl or this guy. You stopped doing things to make yourself happy. Instead, you try to go around and fantasize about getting your needs met by this one person. And that is why people with love addiction, when they encounter the ending of a relationship, it goes on to an extreme level. Like they would have a mental breakdown they would have identity crisis, they would completely doubt and be destroyed by this one person to a point that other people in their life look at them like, why are we so in love with this guy? It's because our core would get touched. In love, trauma gets activated. In love, the unresolved pain, shame, fear, and anger all get stirred up. It's so complex, but we don't understand it. So we conclude it's because of this person. It's because they're leaving, leaving us is heartbroken. But it's not, it's not because of this person. They are the triggers, the reminders of the past, of the wound that is getting activated. And I think that's a really key point to remember. And the third big pattern is this over-dependence. It's not the same thing as codependent because not all insecurity attached people are codependents, but they all share something in common. The first one, you put your partners on a pedestal. It's like they become this powerful force that if they negate you, if they reject you, if they criticize or shame you, you, you don't deserve to live or exist anymore. It's like they have the power, they are this god. And this comes from low self-esteem because we're not sure about our identity. We're not sure about our value or worth. We completely give it to this person that we're insecurely attached to right now. Another interesting thing I would think about is whenever I get so triggered of this one person, I would think, well, what does this relationship, this fear remind me of? I would usually go back to my mom because at that time, my mom is this god figure, right? She decides if I get to survive or not. If she is unhappy about me, if she rejects me or criticizes me, I would be destroyed. I would be anxious all day. I would do everything I can to prove myself to her, to please her, to make her happy. Their inability to take care of us and accept us create this giant wound that is now being projected onto this person. The second behavior is that we have this unrealistic and high expectation to get all our needs met by our partner. Because we put them on the pedestal, because we think we're powerless, they have to meet our needs. They could be this perfect caretaker to babysit everything we are, to give this unconditional love to us, to support us when we're anxious, to be there for us when we're down, to soothe us when we're in incredible pain, or self-doubt or insecurity. All of those patterns, behaviors combined put us in a very dangerous and vulnerable place to the relationship we have in our life. It doesn't really matter who this person is. It doesn't matter if they're suitable for us or they're good for us. It's like we're not seeing them as who they really are. We're not building relationships like adult to adult relationships because we are still behaving and identifying with this hurt little child, this hurt little girl or boy, many, many years ago. For example, I always see myself when I get hurt in relationships, I see myself as a little girl who was left by my mom. Um, she died of cancer when I was seven years old. I was left there powerless and scared, and I basically just froze there. I didn't know what to do. In relationships like this right now, I would behave the same. I would be this needy, crying baby who is constantly needing love and reassurance and security from my partner. And it's not healthy, I know it. And I'm sure a lot of us, we have blamed ourselves for behaving this way, but don't because they're secure and we don't behave this way because of who we are. We behave this way because of what happened to us. 
and we have the potential to change, to evolve into a more complete and integrated person. All right, everyone, I hope this video is helpful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanted to see more videos like this, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.